Hey guys, Bob Watts here. I'm going to show you how to create a bill payment and tracking document in a Google Sheet. It's going to help you organize all your financial obligations. You'll be able to share the sheet with somebody that you might be teaming up with to help you pay your bills. And then it's going to help you prioritize your financial obligations in a lot of different ways. You can add obligations very easily, add new accounts. You can track existing obligations and you'll be able to archive obligations but not delete them so that you preserve that payment information so you'll know when you made payments and how much those payments were for. So the benefits of doing this is that it'll bring order to your process. It's, uh, it's nice to have everything in one place that you can reference. The, uh, the other thing is you'll be able to access it very easily. Uh, for multiple devices. Google makes that very easy to do. The, there are some features within Google Sheets that you ought to know how to use if you're going to truly customize your working document to display the information in a way that, that makes the most sense to you. So I'm going to produce another video that goes into a little more detail about exactly how to create like for very beginner level uh, entry level into Google Sheets, and it'll show you how to do all of these things. But for now, I'm going to flip over to the my sample monthly obligation sheet. And the start of this sheet, the top left corner, this area here, this is going to be preserved for information that's critical. So say, for example, I have a credit card that has a 0% interest rate and it, that offer expires, say, December. Well, the balance is 5,000, and the balance was 5,000 as of January 15th. So it's pretty important that the, this payment, that this get paid off before December 1st, not by even one day, just, you know, they always hit you with some massive fees if you miss the deadline. So this section of the sheet is designed to always present and always have that information be visible. It doesn't matter if you scroll down or if you scroll to the right, that information will stay within your view. Well, right below that, in this example on row five, I created my header row. So this row is all about the pieces of information that you want to maintain in your sheet for each individual account. And that is one of the most important things about the design of a sheet like this, is that each one of these rows represents a different account. If you end up putting information from one account on multiple rows, then you've really destroyed the functionality of the sheet. So for example, if I wanna know, if I wanna sort the sheet based on the payment method, so I can see exactly what's coming out of the checking account and the payments that I have to make manually out of my checking account. Well, I just right click on the H up there and then I sort in ascending order, or you can sort in descending if you want. And then it puts all of the information for what payment method is being used for each individual account all in order and all together. So I now know that these are the bills that I have to go in and pay manually, whereas these are all the bills that get paid automatically. Now, if I want to take the sheet and I want to look at it based on the day of the month that the bills are actually due, I just right click on the column header on, on A and I sort the sheet ascending and it sorts everything below the frozen row and puts it back in the order of this is when the payments are due, which day of the month. So that's very handy to be able to do so that I can organize this information in a lot of different ways. So that's everything on the left side of the sheet. So if I click on uh, 5H or H5, then and that's where I would create the frozen up to this current row and up to this current column and then all of this information would stay put whenever I scroll off to the right. So off to the right, what I have is information about each individual account that changes on a monthly basis. 
So the balance changes. Then I make a note about when that balance was noted because uh, I might not go in every month and change it. So if several months go by and that balance doesn't change, then I can update it as I do future months. Then I also make a note about the rate. That way, if I want to utilize the sheet to see what my most expensive financial obligations are, I just right click on the top of the rate column and then I sort the sheet descending and it puts the most expensive interest rates at the top and it puts the zeros at the bottom. And so this could this could help you hone your plan of attack for which debts you want to try to eliminate first based on the rate that you're paying. Or if you wanted to sort it based on the balance, you would do the same thing. You would right click up there and then you could sort the sheet based on lowest balances first and then working up to your higher balances. So those three columns are they they may or may not be modified every month. But certainly the day that you ended up making the payment on Maggie's MasterCard would be noted right there. So let's say I paid it in January. I paid it January 15th of 21. Uh, and I didn't type that in right. January 15th of 21. And let's say the amount that I paid was the full balance of 568. And let's say that I'm the one that paid it. And then the note uh, might be that, um, you know, I don't know, you might want to send a message. Let's uh, try to keep this at zero. And so there's, uh, you know, you may not like this overflow of text, so you can just go up here and click that and you can truncate that information that shows up in the note. But it's still there and it shows up in your in your. Uh, uh, cell contents row up here at the top. So, and then once I pay that bill, maybe maybe the way I want to use my sheet is I want to take that payment now that it's done and move it down here with these other bills that have been paid. And I just simply hover over this row header. And then when the cursor changes to a hand, I can just click and hold. And then I can move that account to wherever I want to in the sheet and everything else is unaffected. So after I go through and I finish all of January's information, it's all preserved in there. And then let's say uh, the calendar, when the calendar rolls over to February, what I want to do is I want to go up here and highlight every one of these columns. And then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say copy that information. And the reason I'm copying it is because I might or might not want to update the status of all these balances every month. So I want to continue to carry those forward uh, into February. And then if I choose to update them, I'll modify the data at that time. So after I've copied all of these columns, I'm going to right click on it again and I'm going to say insert eight to the left. So what's that going to do? That's going to push all the January information off to the right. And then it's going to present me with eight new columns to the left of that information, but still not in the frozen area. And then I'm going to simply right click on the top left corner of that cell uh, of that block of data. And then I'm going to paste everything that was from January into those columns. Then it's just a simple matter of changing this to February. And then you can leave all of your balances as they are. And then you just go in and you delete out the payments that you made last month. And you're set up with a fresh set of, of spaces for you to input all of the information that you have for the month of February now. And at the same time, you've preserved that balance information that you worked hard on last month to update all of these balances. But you made a note of when that was, so you may or may not have to go in and check everything. You might wait until, you know, maybe March or something to do that if, if that's what you choose. So that's the long and short of it. And I found this technique to be very, very simple. And 
every month it pushes the information out and over time you build a complete history of all of your accounts and then of course when they get paid you come over here and mark them paid in full and then whenever you sort this sheet by the first column it adjusts everything in the entire sheet so you never lose any of your historical information and you uh, you're moving forward keeping all of your accounts in one place and keeping everything organized so i hope this helped you uh, you can leave questions or comments and i'll get to many of them as many of them as i can all right thanks so much guys take care